So a lot of people tag me in pretty much anything Mario or video game related that comes up and this post kind of stood out to me because I was like, that's something pretty cool and I could probably do that fairly easily. So I ordered this online. It's a little HUD that shows your speed. You plug it into your car and it's gonna show how fast you go. But we're gonna combine this with the original Game Boy. Now I'm gonna be able to put the speedometer right here on the Game Boy screen, hook this up in the car and see how fast I'm going with the original Game Boy. And I think that fits perfect with my Super Mario Kart car. Okay, before we get into anything, I wanna take this out of the box, hook it up, make sure it does what it's supposed to do. And then we can start taking apart the Game Boy and making it sweet. Comes with a USB power supply, a suction cup mount right there. And then here's the unit right here. Pretty small, I think it would work great as the Game Boy screen. So that's gonna display the speed. So essentially this has a little thing on the back here that slides into here to kind of lock it in. So we might have to drill a hole in the back of the Game Boy so then this can come out to attach. Plugs in there. We'll just suction cup it somewhere and we'll drive around see if it get, gets the speed or not. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> so far, the suction cup mount sucks just holding this. All right, I used the cord itself to wrap it around over here, just so you can see, just so we know that it works. So we'll go for a quick cruise. Switch some buttons around with the settings. It is now in miles per hour. So it's looking a, more, a little more accurate. Okay, GPS says 18, 21. Let's see if I can get a consistent speed. 26 miles an hour on the GPS, 27. Yeah, 27 and 27, 28. I'd say the accuracy is pretty good and it's set up, so now we just gotta get it in the Game Boy. So here is the speedometer unit. Let's just unplug the power supply, take a look at what we got. This is the suction cup mount, which sucked, so we'll have to mount it a different way. But here's the unit itself. This is what we're working with and seeing how we're gonna mount it into the Game Boy. It's fairly small, so I feel like it could fit there pretty easily. Looks to be about the same cutout right there, so it works great with the original Game Boy. Time to open it up. That's basically what it's gonna look like. Fits pretty good, but it won't close with this back circuit board on there. So we gotta take that out because it's in the way. We'll take this shielding out as well, and then we'll see if that fits. And it actually does, it has no issues right there. But I do need to plug it in still, so we're gonna have to cut a hole in the back of the Game Boy so I can still plug it in. And I like to have some of the buttons still in the Game Boy. So we're gonna take apart the PCB here, trim it down so it could fit inside the Game Boy with the speedometer in there. And I'm just gonna measure how big of a hole I need to cut out. Sorry for people <laughs> don't want to see me cut a PC C board on this, but it is necessary and this Game Boy was in non-working order. So I'm using my Dremel right here with a thin cut blade. This will go right through that easily. Make sure you're wearing a respirator. This kicks up a lot of dust. Once I cut that, I checked for sizing and made sure the hole was big enough We'll just pop that bad boy out. Look at that, there we go. And I did need to trim up a little bit on the sides there, but we got it to fit. That looks good. 
and the back closes nicely. Again, I gotta add that hole for charging, so we're gonna do that now. I just ended up using a little like stone bit to just bore a hole into the plastic there and then widen it so the plug can go through. Perfect, now it fits through there. Let's give everything a wipe down with some alcohol. And do a dry assembly here. Just gonna be using some hot glue to adhere the speedometer to the circuit board so it won't bounce around or move. Little dab of hot glue on all four corners. I got a little bit on the wheel there, so I'm just moving it so it doesn't stay put. And we put the back on and it looks good. Now with the back PCB, there are some buttons that are exposed on the side. So I did want to try to keep that in there as well. So marking out where I need to cut on this board. And then I'm coming back with little trimmers and just cutting off all the little cathodes and things that are kind of going to get in the way with my Dremel that I don't want them flying out. So there it is all clean. Just the chips are left. So I'm just going to cut around those so I can fit it into the board. Now I did test fit like this and I needed to cut out part of that plastic where the cartridge goes because it was in the way where the power cord comes through. So I'm just test fitting and seeing how much I need to take away. All right, let's get a assembly going. I gotta make sure I put all the buttons back in and all the screws to hold everything down. Got that power cord, plug it in. Looking good, just add the screws. I think we're pretty good to go. All right, all assembled. The buttons still feel like they function and we retained all these input things here on the side so it looks like an original Game Boy and all we did was put a speedometer in it. Now I did want to put a Game Boy game in it but it is blocked by the power supply there so I'm gonna to have to modify a Game Boy cartridge to get that to work. Now for mounting it in the car it's gonna attach this metal little scrap metal here because I have magnetic holders in the car and I think that's gonna work better than the suction cup so we're just using a metal grinding wheel and I'm just enjoying some sparks hitting my hand. <laughs> it didn't hurt, I swear. Perfect, just break those apart and I'm just gonna add a little hot glue to this. Put it right over that sticker and it should assemble fine. You guys should check out my podcast, The Weekly War Pipe. We do episodes every Wednesday and Saturday at 7 a.m. Watch here on YouTube or listen online. All right, let's get back to the build. Okay, so I brought it to the car and it literally just pulled the piece off of it because the magnet is so strong. So I think we need to get rid of this sticker here and then I'm gonna use some super glue to adhere the metal. This way it's, it's a tighter bond than hot glue. And I think we'll be in business with that. And one last step, I headed to my local game store, Retro Games Plus. I needed to pick up a Game Boy game. They had an assortment of import games here. Pretty cool colors on the cartridge. A lot of these are fairly cheap. And while I was searching, I found this one here that's actually broken. And I feel like no one's ever gonna purchase this one because it is broken. And I'm gonna need to cut the Game Boy cartridge anyways. So I feel like I'm saving it. So we picked this one up for five bucks. So I was taking apart the cart and I was like, all right, I just got to clip out some stuff here. So I had my little trimmers and clipped it. Oh, it split the cart. <sighs> now I'm going to have to fix this. Should have used the Dremel. All right, so we're going to get some super glue in here and I have some quick activator. So it's going to set up quickly and then I'll just come back in with the Dremel which I've shouldn't have done in the first place. <laughs> and we'll just sand it down nicely and then it'll be able to fit into the Game Boy. Okay, I do need to design a label. This way it's custom. So I got the sizing for it, it's in millimeters here. And I'm just grabbing Super Mario Land just to get an idea of what the label should look like. And I'm looking at speedometers, nothing's really jumping out at me. So I went to the actual listing that I purchased this off of eBay and I grabbed an image from there for the label. Showing 100 miles per hour. And just keep it simple. 
I'm just going to name the game Speedometer. And I'm using an 8-bit font. And I want to get some cool time-lapse motion in a city. I thought that'd be a nice background. So I'm adding that as the background. A little bit of glow onto that text. And we got ourselves a label. Just got to print it out and put it onto the cartridge. All right, I'm just going to be using some photo paper instead of sticker paper just because I don't want to waste anything and this will work just fine. So I bring up the file on my computer and we print it out. Make sure to select four by six and print away. There we go. Tiny little label. We just got to cut it out and get the old label off. Now the old label is giving me some trouble. I was using my razor knife here. I decided to just get some goo gone and let that sit on there so the adhesion would break apart and it came off a lot easier. Just cleaned it up with some rubbing alcohol. And to attach the new label, I'm using contact cement. So I'm just using a brush to paint some onto the cartridge itself and then paint some on the paper and I let it sit for about five minutes and it became tacky. And then this way the two surfaces will bond together nicely. There's the finished cart. One thing that was kind of annoying, those little tabs I kept on there, so I decided, you know what? Let me just sand them off and make it a flat cart right there. I didn't really need those tabs and it just looks a lot cleaner. Another thing that was annoying me was the metal bar kind of stood out. So I decided to paint that so it would blend into the Game Boy a little bit better. This way you don't see it as easily. I'm using a hair dryer to heat up the paint so it dries quicker so I put more coats on there. And it has no problem still sticking to the magnet. So I painted the metal bar here so it blends in a little bit more with the Game Boy. And as you can see it adheres right to the magnet and no issues of it falling off so far. Here's the finished cart right there, a lot cleaner. You could just slide it in right there. Looks believable. The speedometer, let's give it a test. Pretty accurate speed right now on my GPS. It's 34, 36, 37 on the GPS, 38. The downside is having the Game Boy right here. I can't see my RPMs for shifting purposes. I mean, I could just hear when to shift. I don't necessarily have to hear it. But it does look nice for the video having it front and center. But if I wanted to move it off to the side with the magnet, it just takes off. And then you can just place it in there fairly easy. And now it's off to the side in my Game Boy holder on my table. And you can glance over and see the speed if you need to. Maybe the passenger wants to check out how fast I'm going and they can't read this speedometer. I think ideally something in this area over here because there is a void right there where I could definitely put some gauges. There is a Game Boy SP that was four cars that kind of did like a tuning or had some, some application that was specific to cars. And it's very hard to come by and it was only made a very short time. I've never seen one in person, but it looks awesome and that would fit this car really good. We got the police coming. Where are they coming? Bad boys, bad boys. So what did you guys think of the build? Do you want to make one of these for your car? I think you could probably use a Game Boy Pocket or Color, possibly. I'll leave in the description down below the HUD that I got on eBay. So if you want to pick it up, try the mod for yourself and let me know how it turned out. Now, if you guys do like Game Boy games, I tried taking a Game Boy and restoring it by retro brighting it. You can check out that video right here. As always, guys, I'm Russ Lyman and keep your world fun bit by bit. I'll see you next video.